These are called rhythm necklaces. They're used in fields as varied as radio astronomy, nuclear physics, and crystallography to represent a repeating pattern. They're also really interesting when they're applied to music. Let's think about how rhythm is most often represented in a horizontal line. However, circular representations of repeating patterns allow us to think about rhythm in a new geometric way. So what's so great about thinking about rhythm from a geometric perspective? Well, for one, you can instantly see things and proper, you can see properties that you couldn't see before. Um, you can also apply geometric transformations and algorithms to create rhythms from scratch. Here's traditional notation of two different rhythms. Uh, on the left, it's Hound Dog, uh, made famous by Elvis Presley, and on the right, it's Nandon Bawa, a rhythm from Ghana. These are rhythmically distinct um, pieces of music, but visually you can't tell the difference very easily. When they're expressed as a circle, it's easy to see that they're actually mirror images of each other, with one being a <coughs> rotated version of the other. In fact, rotating a rhythm can be the only difference between popular rhythms in multiple cultures. Variations of the hound dog rhythm are found not only in Ghana, but in Cuba and Korea as well. The overlap between these mathematical concepts and musical practice has been largely theoretical to this point. So my friend Sam and I are building a tool to help people to play with rhythm necklaces and interact with them instead of just see them. By using multiple necklaces, each differing in their pitch and geometry, it's easy to visually explore complex rhythms. For example, simply changing the length of a cycle can create different rhythmic ratios between the audible beats and the inaudible pulses. Like the hound dog example, if you simply flip a necklace, you get what's called a bracelet. This rhythm has identical symmetry, but can sound radically different depending on the context of the other necklaces. copy of a necklace and then invert it, you can create an instant polyrhythm. The shadow of a rhythm is found by placing a beat at the midpoint between other beats. This one's really fun. <laughs> In addition to these geometric transformations I've just shown you, you can also create necklaces with algorithms, as I mentioned. This algorithm for creating deep rhythms adds onsets at the same interval until all of the pulses are filled. The hop and jump algorithm has a rule in which no beat can be placed opposite another beat. The necklace here is a popular rhythm from West Africa. The Bjorklund algorithm was developed by an engineer at Los Alamos, and it's used in the timing systems of particle accelerators to run cycles that are as evenly distributed as possible. This maximum evenness that Bjorklund describes is also really interesting in music as well. As onsets are increasingly lumped together in a rhythm, they approach what Bjorklund would call maximum ugliness. It's actually been found that many of the most popular rhythms all around the world exhibit maximum evenness in that they have beats distributed as evenly as possible around a cycle. In general, rhythm necklaces can help us see some of the larger patterns about what makes a piece of music more universally compelling. More importantly, they allow us to tap into some of these patterns just by playing with shapes. How we notate music affects how we understand and interact with it. 
It's obvious, but a little, I think it's worth repeating. The system we use to write music shapes the music we can write. Thank you. Thank you.